nice, all my nice comfy cushions are falling off my bench. Just a second. Oh, no. <laughs> Typically, I've just noticed Poppy wants to go out as well. Poppy, you're just going to have to wait, darling. I'm doing a live sew along, making, making a poppy coat for you. <laughs> oh, I talk to them as though she knows what I'm talking about. She doesn't. But look, Coco's up here. <laughs> the animals are never too far away from me. Hello, Holly. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Oh, right. I've just noticed, guys. Hello, Helen. Hi, Lorianne. I've got the worst nails ever. Oh, lockdown nails. I've got to spend some time tonight doing my nails because we're going to have a close overhead for watching what I'm doing with the hand sewing tomorrow on our big sew. So, I need to have better nails. Um, hello, Claire. Hi. I just wanted to say who anyone who watches this who has felt that they can't say hi just because there's lots of people um, who always do comment and you're feeling like, you know, there's um, um, not room for anybody else. There's always room for new comments, guys. But likewise, there's no pressure to be saying that we're watching either. But yeah, please do um, say hi if you want to. Right, yes, how many people are going to be joining us for the Big Sew? I think, um, hello, Rosie's online now. I think it's around 180, but I'm not sure. Rosie, do you know exactly? Um, so, oh, thank you, Holly. Um, so, yes, so the Big Christmas Sew, if anyone's watching this and doesn't know what I'm talking about, the Big Christmas Sew, woohoo, is going to be tomorrow evening. And we are all going to be wearing a festive outfit, um, I hope, whether you've made that or not. Um, or people, hopefully, it's a, it might be even up to around 200. Wow, that's amazing. So, um, yes, we're going to be wearing festive clothes. We're going to be making a Christmas garland, which will all be hand sewing. It doesn't need a sewing machine. We're hopefully going to be drinking mulled wine and eating yummy chocolates. Those things are the last two things we've sent the recipes out to those of you who have joined it. Oh, oh wow, wonderful. That's amazing. I'm going to be making the truffles as well later. So I'll be interested to see what you think if you get them finished by now. Has anyone else made the truffles ready for tomorrow? I'm thinking, I don't know what I'll have in my local supermarket, but um, I'm hoping we will get... Um, I'll be able to get some coconut ones, coconut to put on them. I like a bit of coconut on chocolate. Make my own mini bounty. So where are you going, Coco? Oh, I've got my ironing board here today. I thought it might make my life easier. You're making them tomorrow morning, Noah. Oh, oh, well, guys, how nice will it be for us all to see each other? All these names we've seen all this time and we're going to be able to see each other. So those of you who have not yet got a ticket, there are still tickets available if you want to join in. It's £5 um, and uh, basically all you need is felt. Um, I've also got, in fact, actually I've got some of my supplies here because I was going to be prepping it tonight so I could talk to you about it before we start. We've basically, the way that I made the garland, woo, I've also, oh yeah, here they are. I bought these which are these gorgeous felt balls. Yeah, so you can make those. I also made lots of little um, these, which are really easy. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make these, which are tassels, which you can use embroidery thread for, um, or you can use wool. These are made out of wool. Um, so we'll be making little tassels. And I actually, oh gosh, I want to make a garland just of tassels so just like stringing lots of tassels along I think that could look really pretty so that's great if any of you who knit and have got lots of wool otherwise yeah like I said you can use the um, um, the embroidery threads I'm just trying to think where those are I think they're in the bottom here sorry this is a really organized bag of treats in here um, oh yeah the embroidery threads so I've bought a bulk load of embroidery threads but we could use those now, if we are going to um, uh, join, if we're going to use these ones, just so you know, you probably want a whole skin to make the tassel. They're more going to be more delicate than those ones. 
but I'll probably use these. I might have a go tonight and make one so that I can see what it looks like. But yeah, otherwise wool. Um, and then also I've got some of that, some of the glitter felt that I had. All of this was just from eBay, guys. Just standard kind of wool felt. The only thing that was different was this stuff, which is the glittery felt, which is actually quite papery. It's not ideal. Um, but yeah. oh, stars. Um, and oh, and then sequins. Standard sequins, guys. Really isn't that much. Um, there isn't that much to do. Um, to, to kind of to buy that specialist stuff. Yeah, it's just something I really do need to sort out in here. Well, that's what I'll be doing later on. So, yeah, I'm going to have a get that all ready so it's all lovely. And um, I don't actually, the Christmas garland is up on my mantelpiece. I should have had it there. But there's lots of photos on my Instagram, guys. And there's still time to join. Um, but it will be all really easy. And then I'll be showing you some hand sewing um, stitches. So I want to show you some French knots. I want to show you blanket stitch in case anyone wants to have a go at that. I didn't do that on mine, but you could. We'll be showing you how we're sewing on sequins, just looking over there, and also little chain stitch flowers, which add a nice little texture to things. So that will be fun. And hopefully um, some of the Sew Over It team will be joining in as well. I know Rosie will be. I think Becca will be once uh, past bedtime. And I think um, Nicole said she's joining too. Anyway, we're very excited about it. Um, Oh yes, and that's a really good point that Rosie's just said. If anyone is unsure about being on camera and don't want people to see them, but they want to join in, that's absolutely fine too. On Zoom, you can just switch off camera and you can switch off microphone. We're actually going to switch off microphones for everybody. And then, because there'll be so many of us, I am going to, um, what we'll do is we'll create some, what we call breakout rooms. So we'll We'll group you into groups of 10 so you can go out and just say hi to 10 people, random people. And you can also be chatting um, privately as well as a big general chat. You can be chatting to each other in the chat function, um, although that is typing like this is. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm going to try, I really want us to be able to just be, um, take off microphones and everyone just chat. But obviously that's 200 people talking all over each other. So that might be quite hilarious. Um, but we will try. But the... The great thing is if you've got your mic if you've got your video on then people can see you and I'm going to certainly spend the start by just having a look at who's on there and seeing all those lovely outfits and lovely faces that I've never seen before very excited right anyway let's get going with the poppy dog coat so I realized this is a bit of a novelty so today but I thought guys by this time, we're probably not looking for really big meaty sews at this time of year, are we? We're looking for slightly smaller things and gifty things. So that's why we've changed our sew along schedule to be a bit more like that. I was about to answer that question, Rosie. Yep, yeah, I am wearing the Georgie dress. I've got a cardi on, no surprise, because I'm cold. Um, but yeah, this is our Georgie dress in Roma Ponte, the forest Roma Ponte, which I believe, I don't know if we've still got some in stock, but we definitely had it in stock before Black Friday. Um, so Rosie will let you know if there is any of it in stock, but yeah, I also this morning guys, one more thing, I filmed a really lovely, um, uh, makes video on how to, uh, on all the makes that we've done from November and oh my goodness, have we been busy and I'd forgotten all the wonderful things that we'd done together. And so it was a bit like Christmas seeing them all. Oh, yay, Noella, you're twinning. Wonderful. So yeah, so that makes video will be up on Friday, I think. And you can see all the finished things that we've been sewing. Right, okay, so. Oh, and other stories, cardigans. Oh, don't tempt me. I've got so many cardigans. I have to have a look. Hi, Sal. Oh, hello, welcome. You've just joined us. Well, that's lovely. Welcome to all newbies. Anyone else want to say if they're brand new watching live? Got anybody else? Always lovely to see new names popping up. Um, right, so this is the pattern. It's a poppy and jazz pattern. Um, and you, it comes in different sizes. So you can make it, and you can also just make it, if you've got a long dog, you could kind of slash it in the middle and just extend it. It basically looks like that. I'd love to put it on poppy afterwards. I don't know where she's gone. Is she hiding? She's gone upstairs. She'll no doubt start barking. Uh, right, so what we're going to do, I'm using our Bombay Spring in teal, 
I've actually got a covered ottoman down there in it, so I'm pretty excited about putting Poppy on there in her coat and then uh, <laughs> taking a photo. Now, if you have got, if you live in a very cold place, um, then uh, you might want to sandwich between your two layers of your coat. You could use some cotton batting, which is what you use in quilts to kind of do the, the kind of stuff in quilts. So you might want to do that. Um, and uh, that you could just sandwich that in and that will make it extra warm. I was thinking about that just then because I was thinking, even though two layers of cottony fabric will actually be cosy for Poppy, it will help her. We, you know, if it was really cold, I could put on um, something that was, uh, yeah, put some batting in it. So what we're going to do, it's so simple this, we are basically going to place them right sides together. So those bits are hanging down, but they're there. And we're going to pin it all the way around, lining up the raw edges. And there are notches. Um, I'm just trying to think where they are. They are. There we go. So we need to use the notches to help us line up. Um, and obviously the curves and the raw edges. We're going to leave a gap around the neckline, which is this bit here. So I've got a lot of pinning to do, guys, because that means I can do a lot of chatting. Yay. So what are people doing right now? What, who is sewing and what are you sewing? Let's find out what we've got going on out there in the wild, guys, in the international wild. Who's sewing? And maybe if you're not sewing right now. Oh, Star Wars style. Okay. Too late for you to sew. Fair dues. It is very late over in Australia. Face masks. Chantelle's making face masks. Um, or maybe you can say, if you're not actually sewing right now, you could say, what's on your sewing table? What are, will you be sewing when you next get back to it? I'm getting a little bit of, sorry, popping around there. Festive masks, yay! Christmas pyjamas, oh yes, that's such a lovely thing. That's my, my Christmas tradition, that I want to always have Christmas pyjamas. Oh, a cake coat in cord, was that? Gingerbread. I saw gingerbread, Lorianne, and then it went off my screen. <laughs> you making gingerbread? Something for gingerbread. <laughs> Rosie, what have you got on your sewing table at the moment? Oh, pom-poms. Oh, yay. Well, pom-poms, Helen, that's a great idea. You can make them yourselves, exactly. Gingerbread house. Oh, wow, fun. Oh, more masks. Lots of masks going on, guys. Going to do clothes on the oranges. Oh, lovely. Oh, there's all sorts. It's the 1st of December, guys, so we can officially get excited about Christmas for those of us who celebrate Christmas. But I think um, we have already got our Christmas boxes out. Um, oh, you're sewing a gingerbread house. Oh, my goodness, Laurie. I did not see that. That's exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so last night, Jasmine and I, after nursery, we got the Christmas decorations out and we had a look. We had a look at uh, what we had and uh, we, all, we reminded ourselves of everything and it's always, you always forget something. Oh, Rosie, Rosie's just letting you all know what she's making, what's on her sewing table. Um, and uh, yeah, we basically had a look at them and decided what we were going to do with them. It was very exciting. It was the first year that I could actually do that with Jasmine and she understood what we were doing and things. <laughs> okay. Right. We're coming up to the area where we need the, the gap. We need to leave that. <laughs> Right. Oh, Heather dress for Kim. Oh, thank you. Oh, painting using the Lisa Comfort paint. Well, that's lovely to hear. I think it's gorgeous too. It does go on really beautifully and also it dries really quickly. Right. She's great for me. Speedy person. Always wanting things to be finish quickly okay we're just carrying on going around here oh 
I saw that, Rosie. What a traitor. I'm joking. We encourage sewing of all sorts. <laughs> you don't have to be. This is the thing, as long as people are sewing and making things, that's wonderful. Doesn't matter, Rosie, if it's not one of ours. Now, okay, so we've done that now. So now I've pinned that all the way around. Okay, and now we're going to sew all the way around. And we're going to just leave this little gap here so that we can turn it through. Okay, so this is what's called bagging out when you basically sew two pieces of fabric inside out and then you turn it through. Oh, now I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find my pedal. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I've already been on my sewing machine today. Molly and I were, so, were making uh, the video. Actually, what am I doing now? Sorry, stop. Before you start chatting, Lisa, think about what you're doing. <laughs> you need to start at one side of the gap. So I'm going to start here so I can go all the way around. And I'm going to use a centimetre seam allowance. So, yes, um, make sure you reverse as well at this point. So yes, well, I was yeah making a video, this mate's video with Molly. She helps film them with me. And she asked me to do some jeans, take up some jeans for her. So she was, uh, so I was doing that with her. Well, you can't see it, but Coco's decided just to sit right there. This could be disastrous. She just loves watching the sewing, the needle. Um, anyway, and I was using top stitching thread because I wanted to give it that kind of like the original hem that was on the jeans but it was not having, my machine did not like the top stitching thread. I just had it on the top, but she didn't, it didn't like it. And it was just like getting all caught in the bobbin. So I had to stop, which is annoying. And I changed to a proper jeans needle and everything. But I think sometimes when that happens, what you can do is put it in the bobbin and it works better. Oh, Coco sat at the end of the ironing board. You can't, they can't see you there, Coco. Do you want to come up here? Come here. No. Okay. Cats never do what you want, do they? Right, round we go. Who will be rushing to the hairdressers in the UK once you're allowed to? Getting in your Christmas hairdos. I am literally, I feel like my hair is just, I can't even be bothered with it anymore. I used to always style it in the mornings. I think it's because I'm just like full, so full on at the moment, I can't be bothered. But um, yeah, I really, I'm, I think I'm going to grow it a bit longer, so, but I still would love a trim. Just to feel a little bit special for Christmas. It would be nice. So I've just been sort of sewing around the kind of tighter curves without really explaining what I'm doing. But you, when you come to a, one of these bits here, I'll, I'll explain when I get to it at the next section, the next one. Because you just want to, you can do it in a fluid motion without stopping and pivoting. But you just need to be able to um, go slow enough so you can kind of go around those curves. going around a curve now so what I'm doing is I'm keeping it quite tight quite flat and then I'm just using both hands like this to just pull it round keeping it on the one centimeter seam allowance guide on the bottom of the machine uh, three eighths of an inch if you work to that and then just keeping it turning like that so you can still stop just to reposition your hands but you don't need to lift up and move the needle or anything Try and do it all in one fluid motion. And then you'll get a much smoother. So if you put your needle in on a curve and then lift up and pivot, you'll get an angle and you don't want that. Here we 
go is another one. Oh, there's Coco. She's on the move again. Don't play with those, Coco. Orbiting round. Keeping, just going a bit more slowly so I've got enough time to move my hands and then stopping as I get to a tight corner. Oh, here she is. You've come to say hi, darling, haven't you? I bet I tell you what you're going to love to play with. I'll give you one on the floor. Look, Coco. Another felt balls. Coco, Coco, what's this? Here. Yeah. And off she goes. The games are usually abruptly come to an end when either Jasmine or Poppy decide that they want to join in. Ruin the game. Okay. Oh, we're coming back to the, we're at the neckline now, guys. So we're, I'm just going to come a little bit more. I've got about 10, 15 centimetre gap there. So four, um, four inches gap. I've did a nice reverse and now I can turn it through. Now, if you've got a really thick fabric, you might need to trim these seam allowances down. I'll, oh, I'll, oh. <laughs> All I'm going to do is trim them down around the curvy bits because that's where it will cause a bit of an issue, but it's fine around the rest. Um, but if you had a bulkier fabric, you might want to trim it down all around the rest. So I'm just taking that seam allowance down to half. So this week... We've got, like we said last week, we've got a bit of an unusual week on the sew alongs. We've got tomorrow night's cr big Christmas sew, which is not going to be on YouTube. It will be on Zoom so we can all see each other. And that event isn't free. It's £5, but there are still tickets, guys. Then on Saturday, uh, 2 o'clock, I'll be streaming back on YouTube doing our big selfless sew. So obviously, we don't want to charge for that. And that will be everyone making drawstring bags and toiletry bags. And those of you in the UK, we're going to ask you to send them in and we're going to take them to our local women's refuge with lots of goodies in them for children and women. And then um, if, you're, if you're not in the UK, you, we thought you could give them to a local charity or just maybe a neighbour or someone that could do with a bit of a pick-me-up. Okay, oh no, that's it. Okay. Right, we are now turning it through. Doesn't matter if you're late to the party, you join in at any time you can. You can always watch it back as well if you actually are watching to see how I'm making something and you're worried that you didn't, you missed the bit you wanted to know how to do. So we're now turning it through. has gone off into the kitchen off into the kitchen with the little ball oh it's proved a big success guys she's loving it might have done the wrong thing she might be then tomorrow night trying to play with them okay All right. there we go we've pulled those out okay so what I'm going to do now, get those out a bit more. I wonder if I just pull a pin in there actually. Sometimes just to get that last bit. It's what a pin is what I use for corners. Um, not normally a curve, but I could put my hand inside. I think this will be more accurate. Come on. Now, we didn't have any Velcro in the uh, shop, which we're going to need to finish this off. But I don't think I'd probably get round to doing that bit with you guys today anyway. Obviously, you want to be able to Velcro it round your little one's tummy. Um, or your big one's tummy. Okay. Um, I'm just pulling the seam out with my pin, like that. Okay. 
almost there guys I think we've gone all the way around yes I have so now what I'm going to do is a lot of ironing I'm going to now iron this flat making sure the seams right on the edge and getting a nice smooth curves and I'm going to iron this tucked in here and then we are going to slip stitch that bit closed so that that's now um, fill, uh, closed basically <laughs> Um, and that's a hand sewing stitch, so I'll do, we'll do that afterwards. So I'm just maybe see if I can pull this ironing board a bit further over so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. That's better, isn't it? Okay. It's a bit of an awkward height for me, but better for you guys. So, and then go do the old licking on the fingers so I can get some grip and then rolling it between my fingers and thumbs so I get that seam right on the edge and then pressing down. already got to this bit but I'm going to go past it and I'll come back and do the little gap bit at the end. Between your fingers and your thumb and pressing down. Sorry guys, it's a bit boring this bit for you, but um, it's the part that we really need to do to make sure. Oh, Coco's going out. Part of the cat flap voucher bobs. I'm so pleased. I've bought a top of the range cat flap. Um, actually Poppy can fit through it as well, but she's very scared out of it. Um, but top of the range cat flap so that Coco could uh, come in and out and it works with the micro trips that the animals have so then we're not getting any other cats in or foxes even or anything and uh, she was scared about a bit for about a month but now it's all good in the hood Okay, so I've gone all the way around that now, guys, and it's nice and flat and neat. So now I'm just going to tuck in this bit so that we can slip stitch this. So we need to, I think I'll work it so I've got, because I've got this chambray denim on the back. Um, so I just need to make sure that that is, um, is not bending over too much or folding over beyond the other on the outer. So I'll just tuck those in like that so now they're lined up. Okay. And now we can do some slip stitching of that gap and then we go around and we top stitch the whole thing. And that's basically all there is to it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Perfect gift for somebody who's got a little dog. Even if you think they might not wear the, the coat that much, I think it's still a nice little thing to get somebody. Oh, there we go. Pop it. Barky barkies. Some delivery van parked in the street, so that'll set Poppy off. Now, this is a bit of a big needle, but I think I might use this one. It's easier for me to show what I'm doing. Not that it's going to be that easy for you to see what I'm doing. Poppy! Hopefully it's not so loud for you guys, but oh my goodness, does that bark drive me mad. Drives me round the bend. I'm sure it drives our neighbours round the bend as well. 
I've got a nice load of these in today actually I just thought it's uh, really um, showing really clearly I do love these they have sold so well I think they've been our most popular product on our Lisa Comfort Home site has been the bouquets and obviously I've had that for a month not died still looking lovely in the house um, saved myself about £40 already in uh, flowers I think I'll always want some fresh flowers as well, but this time of year, there's less options for fresh flowers, so I quite like having the dry flowers. Okay, guys, so slip stitching. I don't think I can come up there like that, um, but I'm just going to, with this, so basically I've just anchored myself, I've just done a little stitch on the spot, and then I'm going into here, right, and this is what I'm gonna show you. I've gone into there, yeah, and then just on that side, then I'm hopping over and then I'm going, it, it, not going forwards and just sort of staying parallel to where I came out. I'm going in on the denim side, okay. Then I'm just going parallel, but hopping over onto the, the uh, brighter side. This is Lisa Comfort Bombay Spring Fabric. And then hopping over to this side. Oops, daisies. Like that. Just do that hop put. So you're basically, and where the me what it the beauty of this stitch is that the big parts of the stitches, so when you're moving along, you're doing it inside the folded edge, so it won't show. And then the only stitches that will show on the top on the outer bit will be the little ones that hop to from side to side. This needle is far too big for this fabric. It's struggling to get through the density of the canvas. Never mind. Does anyone else wear a thimble when they're hand sewing? I can't. I think because I've never learnt with one, I really struggle. But there's times like this with hand sewing when I'm sewing something really stiff that I wish I could. She will look smart, won't she, Kim? Smart indeedy. And very bright coloured. Very on brand. When she comes into the shop with me, into the Lisa Comfort Home shop, we'll make her sit in the window with this on, advertise the fabric. What I use, I use the table sometimes to push the needle in. I'm struggling to get it in. I sort of push it down like that. Oh, interesting chat, thimbles. No, two other people there can't get on. Noella and Changela can't get on with the old thimble. Yeah. I think also it is all about getting the one that suits you, fits you as well. You really have to get the right size thimble, don't you? But yeah, look there, I'm just using if that's why I'm just using the table to push the needle in rather than hurting my finger. Right, we're at the end though, guys. That's it. I'm going to show you it in a second. Just do a couple of stitches on the spot. <laughs> you see, well, you shouldn't really be able to see much, but... Okay. We're now going to go around doing our top stitching. So make sure when you do a top stitch, I always think it looks better if you do a longer stitch length. So we usually say three. Um, and where am I going to start? I want to start in a place probably here where it's really the under bit where it'll kind of be in between their legs there. That's going to be um, a, a nice discreet place. But then we want to, uh, we're going about five mils from, in fact, if I use that and I'll just move my needle over. About five mils from the edge. Um, nice long stitch length of three. Let's go all the way around again. All the way around. And then the last thing we do, which I can't do because we've not got the Velcro, I'll have to get some. The last thing we do is you um, stitch. Um, Sorry, I just said that I don't, you don't, shouldn't really do that, and then I just did it. I did it very gently, though. 
very gently. It's harder actually because they get smaller, these strappy bits, once they're bagged out, once they're turned through. So it is a harder, more acute curve to get round. What was I saying? Yes, Velcro. You need to stitch the Velcro on. But that's the last thing that you do. Another thing actually I've forgotten to say that I'm doing is, which is a bit of a, a cheat what I do if I've got something like this that's really different fabric. So if you've got a much darker fabric underneath than you have on top and you're going to do a top stitching, I always put in the bobbin the thread that will match this side and in the top I'll put the other thread. And it does slightly, so if you can see I've got black there, um, or dark blue I think it is, and then on this side I've got the kind of the teal colour. Um, and you are seeing little flecks of the black thread come through, but tiny amounts just in between the stitches. And that way you don't get contrasting thread on either side. The thread can match. I'm slightly worried that my bobbin's thread going to run out now. That'll be annoying. Here, I can see that I'm going to struggle to pull it round, so I'm just going to gently pull it, two stitches, put the needle in, and then pull it a little bit more. Oh my gosh, Coco, back in again, it's like a blooming yo-yo, jumping up onto the hot iron. Her food's up there, that's why she's jumping up there. Oh, what did I say? I thought the bobbin was going to run out. It's run out. How annoying. I don't think I've got my thread to wind it on here. Let's see, have I, have I got it in here? Hi Poppy, your coat's almost finished. Come down to see it. <gasps> no, bear with guys, I've got to go to my sewing cupboard. Poppy, this is very exciting. You're gonna have a new, yeah, you can go out in a second. You're gonna have a new outfit very soon. Desperate to go out. Let's let her go on then. Go out. You're desperate to go out. Okay. <laughs> She'll be barking in a second, guys. I'll have to let her in again. Right. This is very annoying, but hopefully I can just keep that there and then I don't have to rethread it. Mm. Okay. Quickest way, by the way, if you're throwing a bobbin underneath, the quickest way of checking it's going in the right way is to make a letter Q with it. If you make a letter Q, careful, Coco, she's going to across there, make a letter Q. And then you drop it in like that um, and then feed it into its, its kind of little groove and, and the plate. And if you're doing a one that drops into the machine, so into the fixed bobbin, it's like dropping it in from down here. Then if you make a letter P, you can drop it in. Um, right, I'm just letting Poppy back in. The model. Come on, Poppy. Right. There we go. I'm going to really want to try this on Poppy at the end, guys. I think I'm going to have to. It's 
stay tuned for Poppy modelling. If I clear the decks, get her up on the table, I'll have to like very carefully pin it on her. I don't know how to pin it. I could safety pin it. I've got a safety pin there actually. I could safety pin it onto her. Oh, Poppy, you're going to look very swish. You'll be brightening everyone's day around here with this little bright dog coat on. It's actually be quite good for when I walk her at night because at the moment, I mean, it's obviously not pitch black where we are because um, I'm in London, but when I'm out in the cottage, you know, there's no lights and I generally don't walk her that late there because of that, but she's black and uh, as we know, and uh, I'm, Poppy and I had a horrible incident once, it was actually in London and we were crossing a little road and I didn't see, I think I had my hood up and I had a black coat on and dark jeans and obviously had Poppy and I didn't notice a car and basically a car came and hit Jazzy, uh, Jazzy, Poppy and I. It was going very slowly, it must have been like, it was t just turning the corner, so it must have been like 10 miles an hour, but oh my gosh, being hit by a car at that, at 10 miles an hour, still a big shock. And so we basically, the car went straight into this uh, and Poppy, I don't know what happened, so obviously I must have let go of the lead, and Poppy went underneath the car. Fortunately, she came out the other side um, and was running around this big main road that was next to it. It was awful. And I got just knocked over. And I think my legs went under, but in the middle of the wheels, so it was all fine. I just got one of those really nasty bruises. Nothing was broken. But obviously, Poppy and I were both really shaken up. And uh, so I, my immediate reaction was, though, like in those situations, you get that adrenaline rush. I was like, Poppy, I have to go sort by his Poppy. So I had to catch Poppy. And I remember... Um, getting back to like, I managed to court her, got it back to the, the flat. It's when I was, the, before I had Jazzy, when we were living in a flat. And uh, yeah, and then suddenly I thought, oh my gosh, my leg kills. <laughs> you know, it didn't hit me until then. And I took Poppy to the vets to get her checked. Anyway, if we had this on, that would not have happened. So she did used to, when I walked her then, I, it was in a different area of London. I used to then, I bought a little fluorescent, um, high vis jacket uh, coat for her so that that never happened again and you couldn't believe it that driver drove off not that it was a hit and run because it was well, it was a bit of a hit and run but we were fine but instead of waiting for me could have pulled over waited for me to catch the dog he got out and he said are you okay and i was like yeah where's my dog where's my dog i kind of got up from the the road and they drove off and i remember matt at the time when he came home, he was furious about that. And it was, I think there was a pub on the corner, so he went down there to see if it had come up on their CCTV, but it didn't. Anyway, it was fine, but I mean, it's just awful that some people just are such cowards. Anyway. Now I have an array of brightly colored coats to walk Poppy in. And she has one as well, so we're all fine. Okay. Overlap there, stick, cut that all nice and neat. Oh, this is exciting! Because it doesn't really look like anything until you put it on a dog. It just looks like a weird sort of Matisse-esque shape, doesn't it? Right. I've got two safety pins. One, two. Okay. Just moving all this stuff here. Get that out of the way. Certainly don't want no scissors to be near Poppy. She's probably going to be a bit scared. Right, just bear with me a second, guys, whilst I move this out the way and go get her ladyship. Poppy, it's a moment of fame for you, darling. I'm here. She's looking at me going, what are you doing with me now, Lisa? What are you making me do? Just stay there, darling. Stay there. Do 
check that your coat fits. There we go. Okay. Oh my gosh, guys. Cuteness overload. Poppy, stay still. Just using a safety pin. She's going to try and lick me to stop me from doing it. Just shows what a lovely temperament Poppy is. To stop you from doing anything, she just sort of licks you. I've got this on completely the wrong way around. No, sorry, Poppy. It's not right. <laughs> not right. Here we go. There we go. There we go, Poppy. <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, look, Coco's coming up. Coco approves. Coco approves, Poppy. She's like, where's mine? Where's mine? No. They're so sweet, these two. Well, they can be. <laughs> they can be together. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I love is that her tail comes over like that. Right, there you go, guys. We made a dog coat. And we had a lot of fun doing it. Poppy, sit. 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 Ah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed hope you enjoyed today so long. I certainly did. Poppy's like, get this darn thing off me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can see it makes a very cute gift for a little dog. Um, so I will see, hopefully, a lot of you on the big Christmas show tomorrow. Um, on um, um, If you haven't got a ticket, I'm sure there'll be a link in the description box below. Rosie will put up a link, um, but you can find out about it on our website. So hopefully I'll see some of you then, or if not, I'll see you on Saturday at two o'clock over on YouTube as well. Bye, guys.